brilliant speeches, and I don't know whether I'm going to follow Rachel's one, <laughs> but I just wanted to say, you know, we are going through one of the one of the most traumatic times humans have ever experienced. The fear mongering, guilt mongering, gaslight, yeah, yeah, misinformation from the mainstream, raising people's hopes and then dashing them on purpose again and again and again in order to bring people to their knees, break their spirits and make them question their sanity. But the silence is deafening in Ireland. Abuse can only continue because of silence and complicity. The people who question their sanity are the same ones. The people deliberately inflicting this cruelty, but they won't and don't because of their greed and need for control. And because they have shown through their own actions, they have no conscience or empathy. People are being traumatized by so-called public health guidelines, which has become a cloaked term for tyranny. Trauma has three core ingredients, fear, helplessness, and being trapped. We've been subjected to 24-7 fear-mongering since March 2020. Choice and personal agency are being crushed bit by bit, so we've been rendered helpless and powerless. And as a result, we feel and are trapped in many ways. This puts us into flight, fight and freeze mode. And when these responses become chronic, they take a huge toll on our psychological and physical health. Why would any government perpetrate fear when they profess that their public health guidelines are all about taking care of the vulnerable? If we didn't know before March 2020, we know now just how much our mental health affects our physical health and vice versa. Children are particularly adverse affected by trauma when they are developing. Just imagine, this is all a two-year-old has known. Face masks, social distancing, endless sanitizing, isolation and near constant fear and anxiety around them. People say that children are resilient, but that is not accurate. It's only because their stress buckets haven't been filled up yet. Resilience is built through relationship, connection and emotional safety. The very things being trampled and taken away from us right now. This should not be a wait and see situation to see how much children can take until they break. Our bodies keep the score, as psychiatrist Bessel van der Kolk says. Unresolved trauma accumulates in our nervous system until we are at breaking point. We are going to face a massive mental health crisis unless something is done to stop this tyranny. The needless isolation we've been put through has been particularly damaging and heinous. What do prisons do to punish people? They put them into solitary confinement because they know the effects of isolation on the human nervous system. They are absolutely devastating. Loneliness is one of the biggest killers and do you think the powers that be don't know that? They do and have abused lockdowns and restrictions that keep people disconnected in order to control them and make them afraid. So why aren't more mental health organisations and professionals speaking out about what is staring us all in the face? It's denial in many cases and it is also our put up shut and shut up culture and the appalling way whistleblowers are bullied and vilified. Just think of Morris McCabe and what happened to him. Many are afraid of losing their jobs and reputations and are laying low, and yet some actually agree with the measures, which I find extremely concerning. A health psychologist from NUIG told children to use their pester power to convince parents to get vaccinated. And Dr. Ronan McGlynn told children on a children's programme to tell their parents to get vaccinated so the disease is under control. And we all know the stunt that Tuberty pulled up with a little girl vaccinating a stuffed animal on the Late Late Show last Christmas. and giving them adult responsibilities that are far too big a burden for their little children. But trying to convince parents, through their children, who don't want them to die, that vaccines are re reducing transmission and contraction rates, 
is deviously manipulative and very frightening for them, not to mention an absolute lie. Peter Dotti stated back in October 2020 in the British Medical Journal that these vaccines were not trials to prevent transmission or contraction or to reduce hospitalizations or deaths. Why is that? Surely that makes no sense. They are only being trialed to reduce COVID symptoms, yet we were told ad nauseum that this is the new normal until a vaccine arrives. arrives. They had to lie to us so we go along with the lockdowns and restrictions in the hopes of getting our freedoms back when the vaccine came. Could this possibly have been done on purpose so there would be a never-ending excuse to keep this criminal farce going? don't realise that the vaccines don't prevent transmission or contraction because of calculated lies and misinformation to confuse them. Over 90% are vaccinated and yet most people contracting COVID have had both shots. Baratka stated that we needed 80% vaccinated but that goalpost has also changed. We're now at 90% and that's still not enough. And they are using every coercive measure possible in order to reach 100%. For what purpose? It can't be for herd immunity. The vaccines don't provide the durable and long-lasting immunity that contracting COVID does. There are at least 74 studies showing the superiority of natural immunity. Yet the unvaccinated are being squeezed out of society and even being denied medical care until they comply and take an experimental shot still in clinical trials. What we need to remember is that this tyranny was staggered across the world in order to prevent revolts. They are afraid of our power, and just as they needed our compliance in March 2020, we have the power and choice to take it away. When we stand together, united in one goal, we have the power to stop this tyranny in its tracks by not complying. Thank you very much.